you must look south of the border and be aghast at your party's performance. Well, I'm very sorry for the over a thousand hardworking Tory councillors that, that lost their seats, but I, I think that the story from the local government elections was not just a kicking of our party, but the, you know, the, a main opposition party at this point in the cycle should be looking to put on hundreds of, of seats, and, yes. and they lost seats too. So I, I think there was a, a bit of a plague on both your houses. Well, plague on both your houses, possibly, but this was the worst Conservative performance in local elections in 25 years. It was pretty catastrophic. It wasn't simply bad. What do you think it says about the performance of the government in Westminster? Well, I think what it says is that people know when politicians don't live up to the things that they're going to say and what they say they're going to do. Uh, and even for people who, you know, don't watch every news bulletin or um, throw, you know, pillows at the telly every time that question time is on, they know that we were supposed to have left uh, the European Union on the 29th of March. They were told that. Uh, and they were told by everybody on television a minute after 11 o'clock at night that we could have been out by now and we haven't been. Uh, and, you know, that's something that's easily understandable and, and people want answers as to why. They had a, a general election where 80% of the MPs uh, elected to Parliament stood on a manifesto that said that uh, we will have a, an ordered withdrawal from the European Union and it hasn't happened. Now, I'm a Remainer. I, I you know, I, I voted uh, to, to stay. I wanted to stay. But even... I, 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 and the difference between Adam and I is that before I'm a, a unionist or a nationalist, before I'm, I'm leave or remain, I'm a Democrat. And if we say to people that a decision is so big that politicians can't make it by themselves, it has to be made by the country, we can't then turn around and say that they've got the answer wrong. Almost every newspaper, right or wrong, believes that the solution to this or the, the government solution to this is going to be doing a deal with the Labour Party to get a kind of compromise through and Brexit over the line. And already that's infuriating a lot of Conservatives. Mm -hmm. What's your message to them? Well, my message to them is, is, is look, we maybe have a little bit more of experience of this in Scotland. And, and binary constitutional referenda are enormously divisive. I would happily never fight another one uh, in, my, in my life. Um, but they become more divisive after the vote, never mind the run-up to them. And what we've seen since the Brexit vote is that the, uh, sort of the, the, the two extremes, if you like, the edges are getting louder and louder and louder and the voices in the middle are getting quieter. So on one side, you've got people saying, you know, this was wrong, let's rerun the referendum, let's, let's overturn the result. And on the other side, you've got people saying, look, let's not do a deal at all, let's just crash out, you know, let's take our chances. Um, and so actually, the, the, the answer has to be somewhere in the middle, Andrew. We need to start walking ourselves back to an agreement where we can get the majority of people in the House of Commons on board. And I think so, there is a deal there okay. to be done. I genuinely do. So looking at the deal to be done and what's reported in the papers today of a temporary customs arrangement taking us through to the next general election, guarantees on workers' rights and staying quite close to the single market on goods, does that kind of menu appall you or quite please you? Well, look, like I say, I, I'm, you know, to many of the members of my party, I'm that dreadful Remainer that stood up on a stage at Wembley and, and shouted at Boris Johnson. But, but you know, I respect a result that was given by 17 and a half million people, including over a million in Scotland. And, and I'm having to walk back to work out how can we do this in a way that maximises opportunities and mitigates risks. And what so, I would ask for so colleagues in my party... So that deal is OK, as, for, as far as you're concerned? Uh, well, yes. I mean, if I voted Remain, I voted for, for more than a customs union. I voted for the European Union. So, uh, you, you know, but, but I recognise... Okay. That there was there was a, a, a vote that didn't go my way. Um, I think if you look at if you look, sorry, in. Andrew, I, 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 if, if, if I could just say something, I mean, the public position of both parties aren't actually that far apart here. So so both of them say that they want the benefits of the customs unions. They want no quotas. They want no tariffs. They want no rules of origin. Um, it's just about how we make that work. What are the what are the machinations so, of that look like? So I think there is a deal here to be done. The only reason I was about to bust in is that a Conservative home survey of your own party suggested that 75% of Conservative members want a no-deal Brexit. It does sound as if they're being written out of the script here. I don't think they are being written out of the script. And this is why I've, I've talked at length about how, uh, including at my conference at the weekend, about how binary referendums push people into tribes. They ask for a one-word answer on some of the most complex questions that we have. Uh, and they also don't tell us what 17 and a half million people voted for. Part of the issue we have in the House of Commons is that colleagues um, who I, I don't doubt are, are, are doing this in, from genuinely held positions of what they think is the best sort of Brexit or the best way to you know, mitigate Brexit in, in different forces are looking at different things because 
the vote didn't tell us what Brexit looked like. And I think that's the, the question that the Prime Minister has posed to Jeremy Corbyn today. She's written a, a big open offer to say, let's do a deal. What she's saying is, the withdrawal agreement, this stage, this isn't what Brexit looks like into the future. This is a stepping stone. But we have to leave before we can shape that future. And again, that's something that people in but, Scotland and indeed in Wales and Northern Ireland know something about. But, because we had devolution. And devolution wasn't a one-time event. It's not set in aspic. It doesn't just stay. It's a process. And that's what Brexit can be too. But this has already infuriated a lot of people. And as you know, there is now another attempt to remove the Prime Minister. Let me read what Ian Duncan Smith, former Tory leader himself, says. As a result of the devastating election result, the Prime Minister has in effect become a caretaker. As such, she is not empowered to make any deal with the Labour Party. Two discredited administrations making a discredited deal is not the answer to the electorate. The Prime Minister has to agree to go now. Well, I, I'm, I'm sad that Ian Duncan Smith doesn't have solidarity with the loneliness, loneliness of, of leadership, I have to say, because it's very rare that you see former leaders attacking current ones because it's a blooming hard job and he should know more than anyone. But what I would say to him is, look, the Prime Minister has already set out a broad timetable for herself to go. She's already said she's not fighting the next general election. But we need to get this deal over the line. And it needs, and what it requires is a majority of people in the House of Commons to vote for it. Now, we've gotten pretty close, as you said at the top of the programme. You know, we're getting closer and closer to where that middle ground might be. And I would urge my colleagues in the House of Commons uh, to start taking those first steps to walk back to something in the middle. Because we need to get Brexit done. We need to get it sorted. And we need to allow the country to move on. Because I can't imagine that MPs are having anything different said to them by some of the business leaders in this country, people that run organisations, about this uncertainty is so okay. bad for them. We but need to give people um, a, a view of what the next step looks like.